my name is Johanna von Israel, and along with me is my colleague, Michael. And we are sitting again in the virtual reality laboratory of our institute at Fraunhofer IPK. And uh, we are going to show you what kind of services we offer in the, within the Visioner um, project as transnational access services. And um, I'm going to start with the introduction, a very brief introduction of our institute and then show um, what kind of um, research we're doing here and what kind of technology we are using. We hope we can have a little light demo, I hope. So, and the first danger is to start the presentation, which I'm going to do now. Briefly, where we are, we are located in Berlin, in um, yeah, the western center of the city. Our um, institute is closely related to the campus of the University. Um, you can see that the, the um, red uh, buildings here are uh, the main campus of the Technical University Berlin and our institute is uh, here in this picture in the uh, front um, and it's called the um, Fraunhofer IPK along with uh, a TU Institute at the Institute of Technology and um, so we have a double kind of double institute which houses both um, the the Fraunhofer part, which you see on this slide on the left side, and the TU part, which you see here on the right side. And interestingly, um, both institutes uh, are usually um, headed by the same professor, so that we have a transfer from the uh, basic research to, um, to the applied research. So basic research um, is mostly done at the uh, side of the Technical University here on the right side, and the applied research is um, uh, performed in the Fraunhofer site on the Fraunhofer IPK. So what we do here is we do, um, for example, we do research in automation technology, um, uh, mostly robots and stuff like this. We have um, a big field of medical technology, which has um, a link to the Charité Hospital in Berlin. Uh, we do. Um, we do also production systems and our, our um, branch of our division is called virtual product creation on the Fraunhofer side and industrial information technology on the TU side. And in this, um, in this uh, division we basically have five fields of research. The first field deals with um, the product development process and the methods as, as such. So um, an analysis of um, how we can effectively um, design workflows and product development processes where we have bottlenecks or where we can uh, streamline processes. So this basically looks on the development processes. This, the second uh, field of research looks at the modeling part. So how, how can we model objects um, um, efficiently? How can we not only model the overall layout, the geometry of the model, but also uh, parameters like, let's say, functions, requirements, um, mechatronic parts, and so on. So we try to develop a holistic picture of, of a product in this field of research. The third field of research deals with the interaction with product models. So on the one hand, how can we interact with virtual models, like in a cave or a VR system? On the other hand, how can we create tools that are intuitive to use for the developers or designers who build uh, that, that models. The fourth field of research deals with um, the information management, the information that are needed during the development process like CAT data or um, requirement data or um, additional met metadata you might need in order to um, serve with all the, the uh, information necessary during the entire product life cycle. This field, um, on, from a technology point of view, deals very much with, uh, with product data management systems, database, product life cycle management systems, and so on. And our fourth field of research uh, is in the field of digital manufacturing and uh, digital factories. So in this field, we um, look at how can we create um, product layout or factory layouts before they are actually being implemented 
or if we, for example, can visualize um, the production product creation process in a virtual factory. Uh, these are our five uh, main fields of research. The entire um, virtual reality and interaction side is represented in, in the research domains two and three. So what I'm going to do to talk about today is um, we are talk, uh, I like to talk a little bit about the hardware we are providing and about the software, then give a short uh, uh, overview of about the applications we are offering and then show some research methods we could think of that they might uh, be applied in a transnational sex project in Visionaire and I will just show one slide about one project we already had and what the results were. So what we have is, um, is a cave basically. We have a five-sided cave. It's not that fancy as the one we just saw at in Aachen. Um, it's a five-sided back projected cave. Um, we, ha we also have um, a two-sided photo bench which, which is also available within, uh, within uh, Visionaire. And um, we offer some haptic interfaces, some ha haptic interaction devices. Um, the cave as such um, is uh, using an optical tracking system, also the, the Holobench system, so we have AR tracking, um, AR, AR, uh, tracking cameras installed and the entire visualization is run um, or is, is performed by a, a rendering cluster which runs NVIDIA Quadro at X uh, graphic cards. Um, from a software point of view we develop a, um, a kind of own uh, rendering uh, framework on top on, of OpenSG. OpenSG is a um, distributed um, or a remote uh, rendering uh, uh, system and we build render it on top of it so that we can um, easily integrated in, into our application. So we have a C++ RP uh, which is basically um, based on OpenSG and um, for example scientists who want to use our infrastructure and might also do some programming, enhance uh, our system or develop their own tools, they, might, they may use uh, OpenSG API to uh, write modules that we may import or in, include into our framework. So if you are interested in using our infrastructure um, and want to build your own tools or own, own functions, you can use, have a look at OpenSG, so, which makes it easy, easier for us if you use that uh, framework to in, include it into our environment. Um, on the other hand, we also have an industrial virtual reality uh, platform or system which is called Visual Decision Platform. It used to be ICI Do, now it's um, owned by ASI, AZ. And um, this is basically a, um, an uh, out-of-the-box virtual reality system which you can use to do for example, um, standard um, design reviews. You can also um, do a remote collaboration. You have some modules which allow you to interact with flexible parts. You can do assembly, disassembly, um, in, um, uh, manipulations. You can um, also use, for example, um, uh, virtual human models in order to assess the uh, um, ergonomic pro uh, properties of the product. So this is an out-of-the-box uh, virtual reality system which is also offered within uh, Vision Visionaire if you are more interested in or less interested in de developing your own solution but more interested in visualizing existing models and assessing their, their properties and, and so on. Then on the, uh, the, the third thing we um, have on the, on the software side and this might be known to some of you is um, our tool framework. The tool framework allows to the easy integration of novel um, interaction devices into a virtual reality system. So the tool framework is also part of Visionaire in the joint research activity in Work Package 9, 9 Action 12 and it has recently uh, been released um, at GitHub. My colleague uh, Oliver Veleiper 
uh, that has the most shares in it and um, please feel free to download and use it or have a look at it. So what it basically does is it tries, tries to abstract uh, in the physical domain, abstract um, an in interaction device. Um, you see it here on, on, the, uh, on the bottom of the graph. It tries to um, abstract a an, an physical object which might be tracked uh, or equipped with, with different sensor technologies and might be um, tracked by different um, tracking um, systems. And this is being uh, abstracted uh, by uh, or is being integrated with a specific device driver and then we added an abstraction layer which allows um, the, the framework as such to uh, connect which, which, with each of the uh, available devices in the same manner and the user, in this case the user is the, the application programmer may use those um, abstracted um, devices or also objects to um, easily integrate them in their own virtual reality, uh, virtual reality application. So this makes it very easy um, for us we, to, to use different kinds of physical tools of novel um, interaction uh, technologies. To just, we just have to in, implement them or implement a specific um, uh, driver adapter module for them and then we can use them in our virtual reality um, applications. So if you are interested in testing a novel interaction device, um, it's also doable within a TNA project that, that you come here and we, we, implement, we uh, write uh, the, the device code together and then we can do some usability studies or some assessment together. So this is the third, uh, from a software point, the third thing we can offer. Here are some steps which are required to um, set up um, or to, to use the framework. Uh, this will be available if you, uh, also on the website which was shown on the last page or if you are interested please email us and we can provide it to you. Yeah, the basic um, concept is that you have a, a server, a tool framework server and which is running on obviously on a server and um, then you have various clients and they connect over the network to the server and what you also can do is you can put some uh, stream processors between uh, the device and the server which allow you to for example uh, do some filtering with the data from the um, from the devices or the, do sen perform sensor refusion uh, already within within the framework. Here are some examples. So what we implemented what are some, for example, a, a pen or a, a plier or also a device we I will show to you briefly. This is we call it smart hyper prototyping. This is a, a virtual hatchback which gives you some force feedback um, in a uh, in a design review scenario. There's also a graphical user interface which you can use to configure uh, the, the interaction uh, scenario or to configure the tool setup of the tool framework. So this is another example. These are our uh, second generation interaction devices for immersive modeling, some tangible user interfaces which um, yeah, do basically are, uh, combine a pen and some bi-manual uh, modeling tools and a snapping tool about the applications. So our basic applications are just design reviews but here in a, in a special um, form which we call smart hybrid prototyping which uses uh, not only virtual models but also um, in part physical prototypes um, to enhance the design review process and I will show uh, uh, our approach in, in a second. And the other application we try to emphasize on is immersive modeling, which we will also show to you in a, in a second. So the smart hybrid prototyping basically combines both virtual and physical parts and we try to do as much as possible in, in virtual, uh, with virtual objects, but uh, our, the approach is that we uh, implement um, everything which should be tangible or which should be graspable in a physical manner. And what you see here is in the hatchback of 
uh, um, car. It's basically a Ford Fiesta, and this car um, um, is equipped with a with a force feedback device, which allows you to feel the resistance if you close or open the hatchback of that car, and gives the engineer, which basically has to decide uh, which power or which spring power he has to he he's implementing or he's he's configuring for that car. So the engineer gets gets a tool which allows him to feel the uh, forces or the resistance of the hatchback already early in the development process. And this is a kind of this this is an approach we are um, developing further at the moment. Here you see a video of the actual implementation. So the um, virtual and the physical objects are uh, behaving in the same uh, manner and are synchronized with each other. And the, um, the simulation data or the data um, about the forces were pre-calculated with a CAE system and uploaded to that force feedback device in order to get uh, a realistic behavior. The other um, uh, application we, we are offering is immersive modeling. So we not only use the uh, virtual reality cave to to view or to assess product features, but also to create um, product models. And this, um, for this purpose, we developed different kinds of um, interaction devices, and um, we, we did lots of usability studies. And we we see that designers actually like uh, like it, and that they see certain um, certain advantages in it. And um, I think we, we had at least uh, 100 uh, designers here in our cave doing some usability studies. And the results of those studies show us that designers really appreciate the one-to-one the one -to -one scale and the one-to-one -one size and the sketchiness of the application. And that they also like the interactive interactivity. That means that they, um, in the, moment, in the very moment they, they create the object, they also start to interact with it. And this is something not known from other forms of sketching, like on paper. So here you have a very in, highly interactive uh, creative medium. And yeah, there are some existing other uh, immersive modeling uh, environments or systems, which I won't uh, go into detail about now. But I want to show you our um, system. So this is our cave, and um, I have some now. I have some interaction devices. So this is basically a pen. And this pen has a virtual cursor, and with this pen, which we call also a tangible user interface, you can basically uh, draw into uh, in, in 3D into our cave. And I already wrote something visionary. I hope you can see it. And now I I expand it a little bit. And I can change the colors. And I have some um, some functionality. Um, so we, I can start the menu or call the menu. And there we have, I have three functions. One is erasing, so I can erase something. Or what I also can do is to extrude something. So I have an extrusion tool. And now I'm starting to extrude what I what I what I told before. So this these are um, some basic functions which are possible uh, with the with the, the pen. And then another tool which is very powerful in terms of geometry. This is um, bimanual modeling for this um, the Z curve, and this Z curve is also can also be extruded in in um, 3D space. So as as you just saw in the video, I I can take the uh, tangible object and move it uh, through the space, and if I press one button, the my movement is being extruded as a, as a graphical um, object.
So, so this soon starts to um, look a little bit psychedelic, but um, as I said, our our um, in in our design reviews on in our um, in our usability studies, uh, we found that um, designers actually like it very much, and that they use the system for hours. And at the end of my presentation, I'm going to show you uh, some of the results of, of one of that project we had with Envisioneer. So now I want to talk a little bit about what can what can be done in our case from a from a research perspective, and what uh, res what re research methodologies we can offer, or which we uh, used in the past. So what we, for example, um, did was we did some uh, basic quantitative usability studies where we just measured reaction times and error rates and precision for basic manipulation tasks in virtual reality uh, environments and and um, the example you see here is that we just developed that in this example we um, we uh, developed some um, uh, some basic interaction devices um, for example, something like this, and we measured uh, how long it takes for a user to bring it into a certain orientation or to um, place it on a certain position. And this is something you could do if you devel develop an interaction device, then you can do uh, some assessment of those properties and see how fast you actually uh, can um, perform a certain task with your, um, with your interaction device and then measure times, measure reaction times measure error rate and then compare it to, for example, other studies or other conditions. We also can assess some um, um, uh, qualities like um, joy of use um, or you can use your own questionnaires and you can set up a real scientific study with, uh, yeah, with, with the equipment we have here. Some other methods might include uh, qualitative studies where you first have a discussion or first confront the users with the technology, then have a user discussion and then um, obtain some user requirements from the discussions, uh, develop uh, general ideas and for example estimate how far you can go with a certain technology and also here in these conditions you can do it both in a physical or in a virtual environment and observe, uh, observe the user's behavior of course, you can also use questionnaires to assess um, what they what they think about uh, the technology. So this is another approach, qualitative studies, and the typical layout of a study we um, we uh, think we can do in, with the vision there is um, that we have since, yeah we, we usually have ten days projects, and we, on the first day we should usually confront the users with with our technology. So if they come in groups, they um, start to see the technology, start to see what's possible, um, everybody gets the chance to, to use it, then you have a, usually you have a group discussion or reflection upon what's possible and then give the users on the third to, second to third day some time to um, develop their own skills to elaborate um, um, on, on certain aspects and some of them also develop their uh, own interaction tools for example, in the last um, in the last project we had with a with a university from from France, a student started to develop a tool which actually allows you to copy objects by um, using the small uh, red sphere and um, copying a physical project by um, scratching its surface, and by scratching the surface. The other side, which of the of the two, which was tracked, um, created um, a virtual track in the VR system, so that you could, for example, copy the physical layout of a chair. So this this is one of was one of the um, interaction tools or the interactive tools which were developed in such a project. So on the fourth to seventh days, usually um, the designers or those who use the cave 
start to refine their models and uh, use, for example, our desktop CAD systems to refine them. And um, then on the 7th to 8th day, for example, they can review their, their um, designs and in, in a cave and start to, start to prepare the models for 3D printing. And usually on the, on the last days, we have an exhibition uh, among the uh, employees of our institute, but also for external, um, for external guests. And during that exhibition, the, the, um, the, the products or the designs are being presented. So something I can show you is a lamp which was created already some years ago. This is a lamp which was um, developed by some students. But this is just one of, I think, of out of ten. And you can nicely see um, the movements of, uh, of the hand which created the, sh the outlines of the lamp. But this lamp was then taken into a CAD system, or the model was taken to a CAD system and was refined. And then actually being printed with a um, rapid prototyping system. So this was not the one we have here. We have another one which is a little bit more coarse. It's the HP 3D, 3D printer. But if you want to use it, uh, a 3D printer, you can use this in um, one of the projects. And this is actually a model which was um, printed in our last visionary project, uh, a basket. Yeah, And the basket was uh, also made out of hand-sketched um, traces or paths. And th those were then bent in, in a in a um, 3D CAD system and uh, prepared for 3D printing. There are still some um, problems at the ground of the basket, but um, if you would have had some time, we could also have um, uh, corrected them. Yeah. So this is typical layout of a study. Of course, you do, you're not uh, bound to that layout, but this is a suggestion. If you want to do something in design, design research, if you want to assess the 3D properties of, um, of a virtual environment and if you are interested in um, yeah, finding new means to model and to interact with the room, then this could be a layout for a scientific project. Yeah. Um, then what we also can offer is that um, we develop 3D interaction tools together. And these are the prototypes of our uh, of the um, tools we are currently using. So these uh, are prototypes we developed together with some designers. And here you can see the stages those tools went through before they actually were actually being made. We had some uh, physical layouts, we had some uh, uh, digital layouts, and this is uh, the final layout of the uh, of the objects which, which were then printed with our three D printer and now being used. Yeah, and finally, I want to talk. I want to show you a slide about the project we just had uh, in July. This was our first Visionary Transnational Access project, and as I said, we had um, uh, a group here from from Macron. I'm sorry for my non-existing uh, French pronunciation skills, and. Nevertheless, the project was very interesting. We had uh, four students, two tutors, and they um, basically followed the layout I just showed you, the study layout. And what you see here is are some results or some approaches of students to assess the 3D environment. Um, one student, um, of all, all those projects were about digital materiality. Um, and one, one finding was that materiality does not only exist um, physically, but it can also exist conceptually. And those uh, students found four approaches to create a digital materiality without um, uh, creating a physical materiality. So one uh, student um, created something like a, a digital ink, ink source, and uh, she um, she was bending the the tracker, which was um, yeah, which created the the pass or the, which created the ink of the of the uh, the virtual ink. She was bending it to a string and then started to make rotations or let it let it rotate in space. And she took those um, uh, 
chose those patterns which were created according to physical patterns but in a, in a virtual environment and uh, cr created objects from this like like this basket. Yeah. So these baskets are actually the the, um, the, the traces of uh, the rotating um, targets which were bent to a string. So. And another student, as I just showed you, took uh, created an own um, interaction device and started to copy physical objects with this. And then there were two students who um, tried to somehow reverse um, the the um, constraints um, of the of the creation process. So one student decided to uh, create create a container, for example, for fruits or for books. And as she had no um, physicality and no cons no physical constraints, she decided to first introduce the objects. Um, which uh, were supposed to be in the container into the cave. So she first loaded the fruits into the cave or the books and then she created the container around it. So she, she basically did it the other way around uh, as usually as it's usually been done in the physical world. And the other one, the other uh, student uh, created also with a CAD system he created some um, outline, some, some container like a vase and then he started to punctuate or to uh, the the object with um, yeah, with this with this pen to create small traces and to give like like a skin to the object or like like some hairs and then he removed the original cat system only um, his hand traces were visible and this uh, all those four approaches um, gave the designers the possibility to um, to create a crafts or to, to, to develop a craftsmanship. That, this was what they were looking for, to create a craftsmanship for, um, for uh, interaction in the, in the 3D environment. So that, that crafts, that, that even so there was no physicality present, um, they could be good enough or they, 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 they could uh, uh, find an approach to, to, to make or to, to develop craftsmanship which is sufficient for their own professional um, requirements to themselves. So this was the last page of my presentation. I hope I could uh, show you or give you an overview about what we are doing here. Um, if you have questions, I'm willing to under, answer them now. I got a question. Can, can you extend on the on, on the concept of materiality? Because you you spoke about materiality. Uh, what does it mean exactly in in, in the in the context of design? To do a little um, investigation about it, and what I learned is that uh, materiality is in certain conditions not only the physical substance. Um, or it must not necessarily be only the physical substance, but it can also be just the possibility or um, the potential to do something, um, which which then allows you to think um, of certain possibilities and allow you to to use a certain medium um, mentally as you would use uh, a physical medium. And as, as soon as you have the, the possibility to think about it as a, as a medium which you can manipulate, it's, it starts to get uh, a certain kind of materiality. So, but this is something we are, I'm still very interested in um, understanding also in learning from designers what, what they think if they, um, yeah, if they're using a virtual environment, what they think about um, what mater material properties it has. It's not, it's not easy, it's not answered for me yet, but I found it very interesting. <laughs>